Castle's there, Billy did. The goal, Chris Billy Huddersfield Town. The most famous goal of Chris Billy's life. Is this the moment for Lee Fowler? It is. Take your place in Division 2, Huddersfield Town. Be in Steve Simonson's boots now. He's missed. Steve Simonson clears the frame of the goal and collapses in a heap of tears. Huddersfield Town are promoted. Stephen Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance. Defeat. Right then, uh, good evening and welcome to the Andy Takes That Chance podcast. A last sweet <coughs> victory as Huddersfield Town fell the forest live on Sky as their championship pulse started to beat a little quicker. Will there be unanimous joy or words of caution on tonight's podcast, which is always is sponsored by Magic Rock Brewing. And as always, the tap rooms at Birkby and Home Firth are open. So get this ends down there for some top hills and food from the food truck. And on a more serious note, Magic Rock have also set back up the collection points for the Welcome Centre. So if you do go down there, uh, try to take a tin of food down because it's always very much welcome uh, around uh, the food banks of, of West Yorkshire. So um, that would be great. So live via Zoom tonight, we have uh, a very happy Central Murfield sponsored Richard Kosmala in the house, looking very, very happy. Uh, Neil's got himself uh, behind his Andy's Man Club. Uh what is it, Neil? Is it a banner? Is it on a poster or a banner or something you got going on there? And a, a cracking that, shirt yeah. as well. Yeah. One of and, them uh, stretch out stand up banners. And me, I look like I, I'm Matt Shore and I look like I'm in some kind of strange Amsterdam lighted room here, which, which doesn't look great for me. But tonight we've also got Brady Frost and a welcome back to the podcast for Chris Markham as well. So, how are we doing, guys? Are we all feeling much better about life this week? Big time, man. Big time. Excellent. Yeah, well, Okay, so Huddersfield Town won Nottingham Forest nil in front of the cameras. Uh, uplifting, morale-boosting performance, I think. Um, we only win on a Friday, don't we, at home? <laughs> we're not going to do one of those stats, are we, where we don't win on Saturdays. It's not going to be one of these things again, is it? But anyway, Carlos altered the shape of the midfield to a 4-2-3-1 to set us up, which was, uh, which was good. It suited, for me, it suited the balance of our midfield a lot more, brought a lot more comfort, in my opinion, to uh, the likes of Alex Pritchard and Jonathan Hogg. It's a system which suited them a little bit more. Uh, but it could and should have got off to a ropey start, guys. I, I'm a fan of history. You know, I'm a bit of a history buff. Um, but you didn't have to look too far back in time to realise that Jonathan Hogg thinks that Harry, Harry Arter is a bit of a twat. Uh, we all remember him giving Harry Arter a bit of a rock bottom when we played Cardiff in the Premier League and being sent off. Uh, and he followed that up with a bit of sweet shin music uh, on Friday night. Uh, town like Brentford last week, maybe, well, very much so, got away with one, in my opinion. What do you, what do you guys reckon? Who wants to open us up this week? Me, he would got away with one. He would. He was not <laughs> even in the pit. Three actually, three match ban, isn't it? Ridiculous. Uh, what were you thinking? I mean, that that it reminded me a little bit of the Keen Alfinger at Holland. I mean, obviously not as not ju- dramatic as as that. But have they played since that Cardiff game? Them two on the same pitch. I don't think they have. Have they? Oh, I don't know if they both played at their no, place. I can't because remember. to me that was oh wow. He it would have a tackle. He knew what he was doing, man. <laughs> Well, and, uh, it can't have been that bad. I had to carry it on. So, yeah, hell of a tackle. Had it coming in a little shit. A few at town fans said he got ball. He might have done, but he nearly <laughs> he did. He did, he did, he did. But he also got... Uh, got when it happened, something else. I'm, I'm just... I'm watching in a bar. I said, everyone, that's it. Brilliant 10 men for 88 minutes. I can't believe it. <laughs> he didn't even get booked, did he? So, I can't uh, believe it. Well, go on, Johnny Ogland. But, yeah, I mean... History. I was explaining to everyone who was there, like, that just seemed a bit weird. I says there's history between them two and that as well. But uh, I wonder. I mean, he went off injured, obviously, didn't he? Just before half time, did dog. I don't know if that were as a kind of result, of maybe that or no. He got banged on the pelvis, so it was oh, a yeah. pelvis injury. Yeah. He's got a, he's got a uh, problem with his pelvis, which keeps flaring up, and he took a, an impact to it. So it's. Uh, but you know what, though, a lot of people I saw after kind of town fans were tweeted. That's what I want to see from Manchester Town. That's what we've not seen for so long. Yeah. Bang, get in there. We're too easy to play against. This is it left a mark in more ways than one on that, but it's uh, risky stuff, isn't it? But it, as soon as we saw that, it, I just thought this is going to be a good game here. Yeah. He's uh, lit the, the fuse, really. 
Splendid. Uh, so uh, moving on, I'm just checking to see if the stream is up and running. Um, I'm not sure it is, guys. If one of you could check that for me on YouTube, I'm having a few issues with my laptop here, as usual. Uh, right. So, so Matt, if your if your laptop in, then mine is. Yeah, forty five people are on there. Oof, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Silly. Yeah. So for for me though, Neil, um, things don't always even up for Huddersfield Town. You know, when when we're on the end of a decision, it doesn't feel like that, but. It definitely evened up because uh, Samba, I think it's Samba Sau, isn't it? The the midfielder for Forest went through with a couple of ropey challenges of his own, and after twenty minutes, it should really have been ten versus ten. We, we we'll talk about the three sort of main sending. Might as well just bundle them all together and get it out of the way if you like. But for me, Samba Sau should have gone as well. What what yeah. about that one? Yeah, that's about it, isn't it? The, the, yeah, <laughs> the, the, it, 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 to be fair, he was just trying his best with some pretty daft challenges, really. Wasn't he? he was just trying his best to get sent off, but. To be honest, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad nobody got sent off because it made it a better game. Obviously, Neil, was a bit wonky on it. Neil, do you think that's the referees? Do you think oh, I probably should have got rid of Og? And I think you know the old evening it up. Do, do you think that or, or not? I mean that. Yeah, very, very, very possible. But it made it a better game for for having them both on pitch. It's almost a lot better eleven against eleven in it. And I'm not sure we'd have done. I'm, I'm not even sure we'd have won against uh, ten men. It's almost a funny one, isn't it? But they, they, they were, they were awful, aren't they? Let's be honest. They, they were, they looked a dreadful team. Second they, half, they, they are dude. suffering massive playoff hangover. Second half, mate. I mean, he made a big call, didn't he, to Can Graben, and uh, yeah. But I mean, first half, they. I mean, if you want for Ben Emmers Billings, we'd have been behind, and then they missed another chance. At, at half time, I just thought, which way is it going to go here? Because I just thought Forest. I thought we can play better than this. I remember us having a few texts, Neil, I says we can win this, but it was probably a bit of a bravado kind of statement. But I didn't expect them to fade as much, but as they did in the second half, I just thought if we can show a bit of quality, and which obviously we did with the goal, it, we can do it. But it, we, I was really pleased how we kind of took it on second half. I think we were delighted, aren't we? It's when you see team at start and Graben and Joe Lolly are both sat on the bench. To, to me, that, that's a bit of a boost for us before I've even kicked a ball, to be honest. I know Lyle Taylor's decent, but you just half expecting it's got a turn for Joe Lolly against us at some point, and Graben just tends to get get a goal or two, doesn't he? So I, I would I would delighted they weren't started. Delighted. Chris, talk us through that goal then, because it started from the back pretty much. Um, I think you, you watch the highlights and it's it's essentially picked up on the in the middle just before it goes out from uh, Pritchard to Benza, but. Talk us through that, because for me, that was everything that we, we were hoping for from Carlos Corbran, the new style of play, patience, it, you know, it's sort of altering of the speed of, of attack as well and altering the point. Um, what are you seeing from, talk us through that goal and, and let us know as an analyst, if you like, what are you seeing from Carlos Corbran's side in terms of moving forward? Yeah, I think it's um, the goal was quite, like you say, representative of the change of style. Um, that the, the big change for me, and even from, from from before, from previous managers, is like it's a lot more fluid th- this shape. So you get players uh, appearing in different positions during both in and out of possession. I think, for instance, not in the goal, but in 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 the first half alone, I rewatched it uh, on the on the like the the wide angle, the tactical angle that that I can get access of. And there was a lot of times where you got Pippa, sometimes he's playing in the centre-back, sometimes he's right-back, sometimes he's in centre-mid, sometimes he's right uh, right wing, uh, sometimes he's playing inside on the right in the final third. And you, I think that's the big thing about this uh, Corbrand team. It's going to be so fluid. At times, there was a point when they had comfortable possession. And because it's so man-to-man out of possession, which is a big Bielsa thing, you had Mbenza at right, at right back. Now, you wouldn't be able to see that on the, on, on the TV angle. But when you look at it, I'm thinking, who's that there? And it's Mbenza filling in and knowing what his role is or appearing to. Um, so it's that fluidity that I thought, you know, and, and as well, that gives people a bit more freedom. I think the thing I also noticed as well is how many we had in the box. I know it's an easy one. Mm. But on a lot of crosses, even in the first half as well, you get in the winger. If it's the winger playing the cross or the fullback, you've got uh, obviously Campbell's in there. And I think it also frees up, you know, the 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 attacking midfielders to, to get in the box as well. I think when you mentioned the change of shape at the beginning, um, I thought, again, that was fluid. There were times where, yeah, it did appear Pritchard was playing in front, but then a lot of times as well, Hogg was the one, and then Iting was the one sitting, 
and you've given the freedom to Bakuna, Pritchard, and it'd be interesting when O'Brien comes back to really get forward and rotate and get into those forward areas in the box and support the striker. So I just thought that the goal, obviously the finish was out of this world. Like <laughs> anyone probably saw it coming, but it really is at the top, a top level finish. And I think the overall performance was, I think we've, I personally feel like I've seen that game 50 times in the last five seasons. A tight game could have gone either way. We played well enough to win. And often we don't get that goal. And it gets towards the end, we get a bit nervous and they score. So it was like, I don't know, hopefully it's a change of that uh, mentality of, you know, we've lost them games 1-0, 2-1 for the past two, three seasons now. So I'm hoping that <laughs> that that um, that sort of that goal and, and the way it came about and, and as the lads get more used to the system and the fluidity of it, um, that that we see a few more of these tight wins, which which obviously we had under under Wagner particularly. Chris, can I ask you? I saw a few tweets at half time saying I don't see any difference between and I'll call. I think Pozza, let's get him out. And Pozza said it. I don't see much difference he between it tonight uh, as well. I don't <laughs> see much difference between this sort of Seal Town and Danny Callis. I thought I'm not oh, saying it at the end, on. but I thought there was so much difference. I, it yeah. was football I want to see. I agree with so much that you say that it was fluid. It was good to watch. Yeah, one or two of the component parts, Pritchard again, didn't really do much and, and stuff. But there were definitely massive differences, I thought, from what we'd seen last season. I enjoyed watching us, just didn't know if we could get it done at half time. Yeah, I thought it's, 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 it's a lot. Um, I don't know, even but particularly, I don't know, I think out of possession so much. I don't know who watched the, the Arsenal Liverpool game last night, but Gary Neville was spot on in a lot of what he said around. Some, the main attacking threat of Liverpool for most of that first half uh, was often when Arsenal had the ball in their own in their own third and pressing, and the and the, and the forward players made a real good comment about um, Mane being a brilliant defender. You think he might? He's a winger, but that really makes a difference. And I often think that sets the tone for what happens in possession. If you've got that urgency out of possession, it transmits, and people want to run around and get forward and play with that energetic style uh, in possession. Uh, certainly, obviously, happened with Wagner in the championship season. Um, didn't really, have, obviously, a different style of defending, which is there's no right or wrong, but I just think it lends itself to that a bit more energetic. And I know what I like to see, and it's that energy. And obviously, the fans like to see it as well. People running forward, people, you know, then making recovery runs back, just high energy, both with and without the ball. And that's ultimately, I don't think you can... If you lose and you play like that, well, fine, we've run about, we've given it, and that's what gets the fans on the side. When you play passive, and it's interesting, again, with in the wider game with like Mourinho now at Tottenham, if they start losing and with obviously the Cowlers when they weren't winning, a few other managers, when you play that passive out of possession, out of possession and people think, oh, what's this? Um, and I think, yeah, I think it's a really interesting, I think it's a really interesting, I think, I think there has been a, a big difference. I think, we could maybe come on to later, but there'll be an even bigger difference when people get used to this in terms mm. of the squad. I mean, I think the most exciting thing for me, the most telling thing, were when we were going forward, we were flooding bodies forward, we were attacking, and at, at one nil up, Danny Cowley were in the studio, wasn't it? And at one nil up, he'd have been having an absolute heart attack. The fact that we're piling five and six bodies forward, he'd have been screaming at people to get back in their own half and hold the shape and whatever else, but. That's what I want to see. I want to, I want to see us go and have a go. I don't want to see us try and settle for one. I want to see us go, go and try and get another. And let's be fair, we should have had another. Yeah, you know, they're the both missing an absolute glare there. Tell us about but, that, Neil, but, because what you're talking about there, Peeper is in the inside left channel. You know, he's yeah. the most incredible point from that whole thing. You know, yeah. start, the breakdown is on the edge of their box. Yeah. And uh, Pritchard, Pritchard tries to get it away quickly. It hits um, Iting. It hits Pipper up the back, Pipper up the backside, actually. And then Iting's first time... Sp- First time ball, brilliant. Cracking pass. Yeah, Corona, pass. It really Corona's in. just opened and, everything up. And yeah. people in the inside left. Somebody, a lot of time you'd have seen somebody settle for just getting ball and going for the corner or what have you. But all of a sudden you look and there's four or five flying over halfway line. Absolutely busting the ball up. So yeah, horrible misses by a pair of them. But a the fact great that, save though, wasn't it? That last but, yeah, but the, the, the fact that there were so many people breaking forward to try and score a goal at that point. It made me laugh because we all we all know what Cowley were like for being Pragmatic. sort of settled to <laughs> yes yeah that's that's probably the kindest way to put it. Isn't it? <laughs> um, he was he, he said the, the Dafty one of Dafty's comments I've ever heard. He, he said 
I'd like to see Forrest go two strikers and have a go. Can you imagine him ever put on going, ever going with two strikers? It would never that would it? It's all right. I said it, Neil, though, Forrest. like on one last pods that I was fascinated to, once we get one up, what would we do? Would we, like you say, do what we did under Cowley? Goal kick from, or oh, is it this side or that side? Yeah, it ends up getting yeah, on the card. Let's, let's get for it. Let's get yeah. on the goal. To be fair, you, you know, that, that that maybe was the pressure that the kind of where we are and, and we needed to get results so to give him his due. But it was so refreshing that I just thought we kept going and going and going. I maybe think, a bit naive at times. Well, but, we're, pinching, we're pinching this style out. We've got Corbin for a reason. You know, we're, we're pinching this style, trying to replicate what leagues have done well up down the road. Um, and oh, I think very that, Spanish as well, isn't it? Very yeah, Spanish and and, and I think the fact that you've seen them have two, four, threes already in Premier League, I think that sort of gives you a bit of a signpost as to where we could potentially end up. I'm not saying Premier League. Um, you stay in Premier League, aren't you, Neil? You're getting carried no, away. I'm not, no, no, <laughs> no, I'm definitely not. No? Um, I'm saying you know these more open three, two, four, three kind of games where teams are still going for it, leaving themselves vulnerable, but. The intent is to go out and score goals and entertain and give me that every day at week. Bring it on. Bring they'll, it. they'll definitely be growing pains, won't they? I mean, yeah. an interesting, like, I managed to luckily been to, to sort of, I've become good friends with someone who was on the board of Athletic Bilbao, who who, who he was manager there at uh, Bielsa. And obviously a team who's never been relegated from the top flight in Spain. And he was telling me the most, like, amazing thing around him was, he had, they had they appointed him. And they had a full pre-season, and after the before the first game, they're all all like the board got round and says, "We're going to have to sack him." I'm not sack him. We're going to have to think about this because I'm watching training and it's completely alien to him the way he's asking him to play. I think they lost the first two or three games quite badly, and being like you say, getting criticised of being naive and that. But all of a sudden, like I said, that fluidity and when the players understood what he wanted, understood the role, it just goes like the momentum he can generate. So. It's not going to be a quick fix. There's going to be times where we're saying, you know, now we're saying, oh, wow, Pippa's left wing. There's going to be next week we'll be saying, what the hell is Pippa doing at left wing and why yeah, is the so playing at centre-back? No, but but I think the, the, the that's what you're going to have to live with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think the, the main problem we've got at the moment is lack of squad depth and strength, haven't we? You know, let's not... It's, it's, a, it's nice to win a game. I'm really happy to win a game. But let's not, let's not think that that's just fixed everything now because we've won a game. Forest were poor. Forest were awful on the night. Um, you still you can still only beat lots in front of you, but the squad still needs Certainly. it still needs a, a good few additions yet. Chris, did you did you think? Because I could see the style against Bradford, and maybe Neil's answer my question there. You could see it in a bit that Man United under twenty threes, and definitely on Friday, couldn't really see it in the Brentford and Norwich games. Is that just because we were playing better opposition, or I, I could really tell this new kind of Corber and era really on? I think, I think it will be a bit, obviously, the quality opposition obviously will impact. But I also think as well, a big, uh, another big part of it is getting used to it um, because it is such a different way of playing. You know, I can't, it's complete chalk and cheese, like I said, particularly out of possession, which obviously we were out of possession a lot against Brentford. But in terms of, you know, that, that style, it takes a while to get used to them. I do think it's a huge thing. I know it's an easy one to say. Not having a huge pre-season as... As it is a big thing, uh, particularly for when you're trying to radically change the style. If you remember back, I, I liken it to when, uh, when obviously Chris Powell left and, and we brought Wagner in. And I remember obviously when I was there and David came in, that first season, we knew, we, we could have gone down. You know, he, he had a full season, then he had a, um, a, a pre-season, that legendary pre-season, and then he had the, a, a, full, a new full team. And that's only when the results really changed. So to ex, you know, I think there's definitely been a change, and I think that's probably why you'll start seeing hopefully these more consistent performances. Um, so to answer your question, yeah, I, I, I do think that there's been a change, and, and and you'll start seeing it more and more as 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 the as the squad gets used to it. Good stuff. I, I'd like to talk about some individual performances, and, and Brady, I'm very wary that you've not had a chance to jump in yet. So I'll come to you first. But th- there are some individual performances which I thought really stood out. And in particular, everybody loves a, a redemption story. Well, I do. Uh, everyone loves a, a story of redemption. And there's one man who's taken a lot of stick, a lot of hammer. We've even poked fun at him, obviously not at him, but we've obviously poked fun at him a couple of times, et cetera, et cetera. Mostly good-natured. Um, 
Did you see a lot of him there, uh, Matt or Hammer? Sorry, mate. He, yeah, exactly. And the man I'm talking about is Ben Hamer. Um, that first save in particular from Amiobi is a match-winning save, Brady. There's no two ways about that. And I, for one, as 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 did I ever tell anybody that used to be a goalkeeper? Who knows? <laughs> uh, he, as as a paid-up member of that union, I, I was absolutely delighted for for him and the performance because he seems like a top bloke, does Ben Hamer? Yeah, I was I was really pleased for him too. I think um, you know, let's make no bones about it. He's not had a good time at town so far. We've not been the kindest to him. I think you know. You can be unhappy with how a player's playing, but I think some of the personal abuse he's got is horrendous. But um, going back to the game, yeah, some fantastic saves, a really good performance. And um, we did we did kind of say with no fans in, um, some players may fancy that better. And potentially, you know, having a performance like that, and again, we're not sure when fans were going to come in and we'll, we'll come on to that, but maybe this is a good opportunity for Hamer to build his confidence. And I know I've, I've criticised him in the past and, you know, I, I said previously about, you know, maybe starting Pereira. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased for him. You know, you want to see him doing well, you know, um, and you know, goalkeepers in the championship do make mistakes. But um, I think the real important thing with Hamer is how he recovers from when he makes another mistake. Um, but a fantastic performance. And um, I thought the interview with him um, on the, like afterwards with the club was really interested in, you know, he said he hold, held his hands up and was like, look, I've not I've not been good while I've been here, um, but we're kind of building something and it feels exciting. And um, yeah, I, I think it's nice to see, isn't it? Because, um, you know, especially given all the COVID and how difficult the transfer market's been, it, you know, we are going to have to welcome players back in um, that we might not necessarily want it at the start of the season. And um, yeah, hats off to him. You know, I think, um, yeah, he won us the game and, you know, I thought he deserved man of the match, really save was sensational their keepers always have a dodgy one against us don't they I, I mean on in that first half when he fumbled it I thought here we go again we're going to get a because he, he gives he gives you that belief that we could score here and obviously we don't get many so he was on yeah. trial you know at Huddersfield what uh, he yeah. Yeah. He's, he came uh, he's in one, great. he came he's in one pre-season um, and not land in a minute here but I remember Ben or Ian Bennett saying you should see this guy. And I like, you know, like, just like one minute, like unbelievable. And the next minute you're thinking, how has he managed to get here? Um, but yeah, it's interesting, <laughs> like you say, that, that, that trajectory and a bit of confidence. Now he's signing for a fortune, didn't they? And, you know, it's, it's an interesting one. Sorry. Is, is he at Forest, Ian Bennett? Still? No, he's gone. He's just joined Middlesbrough with uh, Warnock. Uh, good move, good move. Tell you what, though, in that super yeah. slow-mo, that Sky do well. That, it, oh, was just, was... it was just like, well, I don't want to say it, but it was just amazing, wasn't it? It it was it was great. Um, we'll we'll come to someone else because Ben Amer, I've asked for some uh, opinion online, and we'll come to that shortly in terms of players. But uh, another player, I'll go to you, Neil, ex centre back, strapping, <laughs> six foot plus man over there before before the days of Andy Duggan, <laughs> yeah, the Andy Duggan <laughs> of the George and White. Books, Andy Duggan, I'll have you know. <laughs> Ken O'Doherty and Andy Duggan's love child in the corner there. So <laughs> with uh, Ramoni Critchlow. I just want to say a bit about Ramoni Critchley. He was given man of the match, um, signed three years ago from Enfield Borough, uh, not even Enfield Town, Enfield Borough. Uh, and he was playing at a tier, tier 11, which is not too distant from, from when I used to play on a, on a Saturday as well. It's not that far away. He's had loans at Bradford Park Avenue, Hartlepool and Welling as primarily a left back, uh, which is where I was seen. And he's, He's so comfortable in possession and so comfortable at stretching the play and overlapping as a centre-back, which is something you'll see Chris Wilder do at Sheffield United, that he's been able to play centre-half so effectively in this system. And for me, this system really has been the birth of him, if you like, and it's really given him a leg up. And he looked, I thought, first 60 minutes, there was a couple of times where he got bullied, which is expected in your first full championship start. You know, Amiobi brushed him off, didn't he, for the chance, for the Hamer save and... Grabbing, I think, had a had a got him second half. But Lyle Taylor was put specifically on him, Neil, to bully him. And he never really let up. And in that last 30 minutes, I thought he was sensational in the, in the last sort of in closing out of the game. Man, it matched for me. Um, I thought it, um, his best game in a town shirt, no doubt about it. But I think for a young kid to come in live on Sky, big game. We haven't won for God knows how long. You know, we, we haven't scored a goal, etc. With there's been all this discontent around him for a young, young kid to step in and play like he did. We all know his personal circumstances. I mean, obviously the tragedy last year 
ballsy, 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 ballsy for him to come in and perform like that. I mean, I'll be honest, after watching the pre-season games and watching, we're lumping Rochdale in with that, aren't we? Um, it's fair. But to, but to, to watch those, I, I would I would actually be disappointed he didn't start against Norwich. I, I'd have started him instead of um, Stearman. I'd have played him with Schindler against Norwich. So I'm disappointed. So the fact that he's now in the side in place of Schindler, unfortunately injured, um, I just thought it was outstanding. I just, I just thought it was a, a really grown up sort of man's performance from a young lad thrown in. And uh, he's got a future, hasn't he? He's, he's, you can just tell how, how he holds himself, how he plays. He's, he's got a future as this kid. I don't want to start going over the top. Let, I, I'm, I, I hate it when people put, start putting too much pressure on these young ones too. So yeah. let him come, let him get his shirt, let him get you know, six, seven, eight games on bounce, maybe pull him out for a couple, let him have a rest, get other lads in, you know, do, do it do it sensibly. But from what we've seen so far, the, the, the kid can play. And uh, yeah, absolutely delighted. Yeah, my, my man at that sat on ground. They were, they were a brilliant picture, like, of him beaming, smiling. It were like, why does Umber Bridge, man? It were beautiful. And there were, a, there were some really good photos from Friday when Campbell scored the joy. People, it was just like, I just thought for the first time for a while, it... There's a bit of a team there coming and a bit of spirit and it's easy to say it when you've won and maybe you're, you're kind of getting carried away. But it, there were some really nice uh, kind of moments and yeah, we, we, there's, there's still not 11, I don't think, rowing in the same direction, but we're getting no. there. Do you know it's what, a- Cosy Raw? After all, with, with what? With, before the other night, we'd won 25 and 130, something like that. You know, we've, we've, we've reeled that stat out God knows how many times and the, the last numbers just got bigger and bigger and the, the 20 odd ain't got any bigger. Um, when we've witnessed all that and talked about all those, do you know what? It's nice to have a, a week off from more than about. I mean, I know I've a bit of a more than anyway, but it's nice to have a week off from it and just sit back and bask in the glory of a win because they don't happen often. And when you've had as as, as few as we have over the last few years, let's just enjoy winning a game of football because like, at the end of the day, that's where we all go. You know, you the do fact it on a that, Friday and all, it just makes it, doesn't it? it yeah, all if we can set up, up in it and, you know... You enjoy Soccer Saturday, can't you? Yeah, there's, 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 no, there's no Bristol nobody. on that Friday in that Wagner year when we got absolutely bad and I were like proper... It was like an hangover for three days, but this was, this was brilliant, you know. But as, as fans, we can all moan and, and moan as much as you want and slag everything off as much as you want and whatever else. But we all started watching Huddersfield Town and we're falling in love with it, and there's no better. We well, want to see him win. I want, I want, I want to see Ben Ayman have a storm every week and tip a couple of it bar. You know, I'd, I'd have been absolutely delighted if Dia Carby had bagged that way. Should have bagged that chance, but I'd have been delighted if he had. You know, it's not a. The two aren't mutually exclusive. Other, you, you can criticise, but don't mean to say you don't want these lads to do well. And at the end we of want the day, now. Man. I want to the, see the, us pulling a time shirt on one of the window, don't we? We do, but I want to see that football, mate. I don't want to see a lot of that stuff we watched last year, mate. It matters to me how we do it. We're kids and we're doing it, play some nice football. So it would have double buzz for me with that. No, I'm, I'm, well, we said that earlier on, didn't we? We said it were a lot better, a lot easier on the eye. The fact that we've got four or five people breaking forward with five minutes left to try and get a goal, that sort of sums up how this is going to play out, doesn't it? And the type Never of style like, that we're going for. And that's we you know, out. exciting. We saw it out quite comfortable, didn't we, in the end? I were, I were waiting for a bit of a, a burst from Forrest or a bit of a hiding Never behind happened, the kind of sofa. They weren't really anything, were they? We just had that one warning we grabbed and we ate that sort of half volley from the corner that, of the box. That were, yeah, excellent. It just shows you the quality he's got. So I think we I think we got away with him within, where we were with him not starting. But deserve win. So it's, it, what did he deserve win? That's another day. Another couple of players that I want to mention that have come in for a, a bit of praise before I do one specific thing on one player. Uh, Harry Tuffalo. Uh, Danny Cowley said uh, afterwards on Sky that Harry Tuffalo is uh, he's becoming one of the best fullbacks in the championship. And for me, it's hard to disagree with him. He's, he's a consistent 7 out of 10, at least minimum, every week, Brady. Uh, he's you know he's set the goal up. You know, And the thing is, though, um, Cosy, I know after you were saying Jack Colback should have done better on the on the block, but... You know, he, he covers that front space, does Jack Colbeck. And Harry Toffler still got the spatial awareness to sort of reverse pick out Campbell on the penalty spot. And I just thought it was such great play, really, from Toffler. And I think he deserved that. And he's he's played well 
against Norwich, you know, he did the job on Cantwell. He got injured against Brentford, but for me, his he, his form at the end of last season was a real bright point. And I'll tell you uh, one thing better. before you go into depth on the, what, what happened with Toffolo there, just a quick mention for another another guy who have absolutely ruined, and I still don't think he's the answer, but you never know. Um, the reverse ball, the round side from Mbenza for him were cracking. Oh, he's coming up. Don't worry about Mbenza. He's coming. He's coming. Finally. <laughs> Go on, Brady. Uh, <laughs> that was really weird, Matt. I wasn't sure where you're going that. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> anyway, Toffola. Yeah, he's been um, he's been really good, hasn't he, since we signed him in January. Um, I completely agree with you. He's, he's just solid, I think. Left back was, you know, fullbacks last season were a bit of an issue in general. Obviously, we had Danny Simpson, but, you know, Toffolo, I think, obviously, I know this isn't the other thing, but he's, he's great on social, like, he seems to interact with the fans. Um, he just seems like a good lad and, like, he, he works hard. That's what we want from town, isn't it? We, we, we like players who work hard, put a shift in and get stuck in. But I think what's great about Toffolo is he, he, you know, he is good going forward. Obviously, he scored that great goal against Derby last season. Um, you know, he, he did the cross for Campbell. He he does offer that. Um, you know, he does offer that attacking ability, and you know, helps create chances. But the, the fitness. I mean, obviously, Chris was talking about the system, but you know, to be you know, fullbacks in the modern game, but to have the fitness to get back and forward and attack, like it's like marathon running. And you know, you know, Toffolo went off injured against Brentford. Well, you, you wouldn't know, you know, in the in the game yeah. against Forest. Um, yeah, I mean, what was it? Half a million we signed signed him for, allegedly. Uh, absolute brilliant signing, fantastic, and it uh, looks like he'll just uh, continue to do great for the season, hopefully. Yeah, Possibly a future job. prem player, do you reckon, Chris? Um, potentially, I think that the, the stretch, difference maybe. maker is. <laughs> yeah, the difference maker is that consistency, isn't it? Like you say, he's a consistent performer. The consistency of delivery and being able, you know, in the modern game, you know, the highest level it is that um, the consistency of the end product is more important, you know, often gets more more uh, value than defending well, which I've, I do have a problem with. But I think it's that consistency of delivery it does also get into positions where, you know, sometimes his crossing is erratic. And I think that's when you see, right, that's the area of his game. If he can, because he gets in some great positions and he'll get into some even better positions uh, in this system and with his athleticism. It's just about can he consistently, you know, if you look at uh, Tommy Smith for the promotion season, you know, his consistency at that stage was was outstanding of when he got into the final third and in those good positions, putting things on the plate for people. And when you get into that rhythm and, you know, you see obviously, obviously it didn't work out here in the end, but he's gone on and, and got a good move for himself um, and, and really sort of um, if for his career, that made him. And it was that consistency of that end product, which all of a sudden, you know, fullbacks aren't attractive these days, apparently, unless they've got 10, 20 assists. <laughs> you know, that's what gets them in the papers and that's what makes people uh, remember them. But I think the, the thing that probably goes un, underrated about Toffolo is actually a, a good defender. And he, from his background and where he's played at, he's had to do that. He's had to grind it out. He's not one of these young academy fullbacks who are just purely playing as a left, right winger all the time. He's had to do those, you know, playing in, in those lower leagues. And yeah, I think he's... <laughs> I think it's that, is he going to be a Prem player? It might be a, um, a bit of a big shout to say at the minute, but I think if he, it'll be about that consistency of delivery in the final third for him. If I he think when you watch like Alexander Arnold and Roberts, although Robertson did make an error, didn't he, last night, but he made up for it. They've just like raised the bar on full-backs yeah. level. They're probably two of the, maybe the best full-backs in Europe. I watch a lot of stuff. Yeah, no they're, doubt. They're, I think as well with, with, with the full-back pairing, I think Pippa, and from what I see of him, I don't know if he's on the list to talk about, from what I see of him, I think the key for him, like I said earlier, will be his, the understanding of the tactical understanding of he's going to be that person who can build from the full uh, the centre back area. He can fill in out of possession. He'll have that um, that Spanish under, tactical understanding that that those that the Spaniards seem to have, especially playing in this type of system. He'll know where to fill in. So I think as a full back pairing, which is really important in the championship, for all the reasons you, uh, you you said. I think I think that's probably one of the strengths of the team, if I'm honest. Uh, yeah. um, Richard Cosmiler's tip for player of the season, I believe, as well, is, is Harry Toffolo. So one to keep an eye on for sure. Um, the double pivot. So the 4-2-3-1 double pivot. Hogg obviously um, went off injured, but a really interesting mix was the the Dutch duo of uh, Janino Bakuna and Carol uh, Eiting. 
Um, a more disciplined, but what we, I like Janino Bakuna a lot. Uh, I think he's a real maverick, a real go-to man. And we, we've been saying, Neil was spot on last week, I think, when he said that his best position is coming on to change a game from uh, from the bench. But we saw a very different performance, which might have slipped under the radar for me. And I was looking at, you know, because I'm a nerd, I was looking at his heat maps, et cetera. And he, he put in a really disciplined performance as an eight and a six uh, when Hogg went off. He uh, he recycled possession brilliantly. Usually he's so erratic, he's passing so erratic, but he's got an 88.1% accuracy for passing, which is really good for Gennaro Bakuna because he's usually trying all sorts of different things. But, but for me, he was quite quite a key component, one under the radar. And uh, Carol Lighting, um, obviously he needs to get up to speed, but I thought there were three passes in particular that he played, one to, uh, which, Neil, you mentioned already in terms of uh, getting Karoma in uh, for that double miss but there was a, his first touch was a a very sexy looking reverse pass and you know I'm a sucker for a reverse passing football as much as anything and I, I think I'm going to enjoy watching this guy play I'm just wondering what you guys thought of those two uh, at the base of midfield uh, we'll go to you uh, Neil that was very game showy like so apologies for that <laughs> And I was dreading his saying, mate, so I've been listening to something about Let's go to... Um, no, go. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. <laughs> um, but Baku, I think Bakuna splits opinion, doesn't it? And I think the main reason for that is because it can be a bit of an hothead. Um, it can be... Like that cat that's meowing at you right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> can't beat it, can you? Shouting at me. Um, probably just telling me to shut up, to be honest, like everybody else watches. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, he's, he's just he's, he's a bit of a wild card, you know. I, I still believe that his best his best role at the moment is coming off at bench because that's seen, that's when he seemed to do his his best, most consistent work. I think I said it last week that yeah, he did. In in, in three touches, he can go from Barcelona to the shot and back to Barcelona. That that's how that's how erratic it can be. That and I think people get frustrated with him because you see stuff he has done. I mean, but it Charlton last year when he just ping one in at the top. Top bins from about thirty-five yard or something. Just re- nonchalant re- as well, wasn't it? Just like yeah, easy, just, yeah, yeah, bang. And I think it's so frustrating when you can see a lad who has got all the talent in the world, and the last thing you want him to do is waste it, you know. And he's he has got he's got the potential to be anything he wants. And hopefully, we've got a coach <laughs> now. And, and, and yeah, Max agrees. Stop talking shite. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, he agrees with that one. He agrees. <laughs> Um, but I think he, he's got the potential now to, to to go on and be a good player for us. But he's also equally got potential to be mixed bag. Absolutely, match you're right. Yeah, uh, Chris, how do you tame someone like Bakuna? We, we saw Danny Cowley mention that they're trying to get him to do the more simple things, which I thought Danny Cowley was spot on with. Um, he played quite well under Jan Ziva, to be fair. He, I think Jan Ziva got a, he didn't get a tune out of a lot of people, but I think he definitely did with Janino Bakuna. Uh, David Wagner didn't use him as much as maybe what others have done. But how how do you look at a player like that? And how do you think Town's best approach is to get the best out of him? Is it maybe the people that he surrounds himself with? Maybe his discipline to training? Maybe his... Because it is discipline. Every, the, the word I think of when I think of Janino Bakuna is discipline on the field. You know, I don't I don't know the guy off of it, so I yeah, won't yeah. go there. But, you know, I look at the things that he tries. And when there's a, there's a fight, like Neil's very right, you know, he can go from here to there to all over the place. And... When there's a five-yard simple pass on, you know he'll he'll do three step overs, drag back, you know, round the world and rainbow flick and volley 50, 60 yards to to kneel in the stand, you know, when we're allowed back. But how do you just essentially how do you just rein someone in like that and uh, give him blinkers like the, like they're doing horse racing? Yeah, I think it's is it. I'm not even sure it is giving him blinkers. I think someone like that. I mean, it, just to show how he is, his hair changes color and style more than I don't think. You know, that probably gives you an indication into the person he's. I don't know him at all. I think sometimes it's about actually this freedom of how Corbran and, uh, is going to play and that freedom to, to try things, get forward. You know, like you said, he played a bit deeper, as, 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 as you pointed out, and it, it was at times. But at times he was also the one making the box. Someone like that with the sort of, you know, like I said, that, that freedom that he might want, it might be just to get him enjoying it again. You know, he might be one that's actually, do you know what, right, I want you to do this and it's very rigid and this is how we do it. And this is, whereas with Corbrand, it's the opposite of that. It's like I keep saying, it's free, it's that freedom of, right, do you know what, I'm going to go here because I know someone's going to understand the role of the team is to do that. And they, they, I, they can fill in for me where I've gone. 
I said last time we were on when we were obviously the doom and gloom after losing to Forest. Um, I said I, I think he's a match winner on his day. I think he can be a match winner, um, and maybe someone like him might be one that you sort of sort of think might thrive in this sort of new free get forward, you know, all action approach, if you like, uh, as opposed to trying to put the blinkers on him. Um, I understand why, obviously, he needs to be able to certainly fulfil his role in the team and that discipline he's got. But I think the interesting thing with him is he could be, be the opposite, could actually be the one where you say, right, that all action style might suit him, go and express himself, he enjoys going to training, he enjoys being able to, you know, be that, ha have that freedom to express himself and be as, be as uh, exciting as his hair. Um, I don't know. We'll come on to, and we're talking a lot about players here. And, and, and Cosy, you mentioned that Alex Pritchard, and he's a player that's his, his performance is split opinion um, at the weekend. I thought it was much improved playing at 10. I thought the majority of what he did was positive. I think that my main criticism is that everything he's done has gone backwards, you know, in, in for, for the last two years, uh, he's never really had any runners on beyond him and, He's looked really ineffective to me, and but for me on Friday night, he was, he was like the gatekeeper, if you like, to us getting into the final third. I thought a lot of things went through him. He played uh, Karoma in a lot of times. Uh, his his pack, passing accuracy isn't always going to be as high uh, when you take risks, um, but for for me, I thought he did quite well. Uh, Phil Starbuck gave him man of the match in the in the post match as well. So it just shows how opinions have altered on that. And whereas I'm not going to give him man of the match, I thought there was much improvement in him and Isaac and Benzer. Let's bundle them both in. I thought Isaac and Benzer as well. I thought that's probably, it's a very low bar for, for both, let's be honest. But I thought and Benzer was, that's probably his best performance for town as well. What did you make to both of them? Let's bundle them together for you. I want to sold on Pritchard. It might sound like I've got a vendetta against him, but we were group chatting, weren't we, Neil, early in the first half. And I think we were saying probably one of the worst players on the pitch. But it's interesting, isn't it, that you think differently, Matt? I want to, obviously... We've got to be expecting more than that, haven't we, from him? And it'd be interesting with hating. I mean, what you said last week, Brady, yeah, the guy, it looks like he's probably going to step into the hog role, but he's obviously got previous and playing in that 10, or, or are we still in the market for a 10? It'll be interesting because by each passing week, I just don't see, I don't see Pritchard being that that man. I, I'd be ready to kind of move him to one side, but then I'd... Uh, Moved him around and look what he did on Friday. That's probably why I'm sat here not managing us through the town. So, yeah, I thought they were a bit all right, Matt, but uh, six and a half pushing seven, but no more than that, in my opinion. Not bad scores considering what they've got before. Maybe, maybe it's the low yeah. bar. Uh, Brady, what do you reckon to, to the pair? Yeah, I, I agree, Matt. I thought Pritchard was in, improved again. No one of these players where it's a low bar, but. Um, I think again we've t we've talked about Pritchard to death, but he you can you've seen that he's been a quality player before, and it's just one of them where I suppose time's running out. But really, like I think he is one of those players where if he did get a goal or you know he could go on a bit of a run, and you know I think what's been quite interesting is he's I thought he's all right at winning possession now and again. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see when O'Brien's back what our midfield will be like, but. You know, as Cody kind of alluded to, you know, I did that piece on writing and it sounds like we've got a really exciting player. Um, I think Hogg, uh, again, it'll be interesting to see. I wonder if he's not going to play every game because obviously he's got that long-standing injury anyway that kind of keeps him out. Um, and then you've got Bakuna. But yeah, I think it's difficult because obviously the transfer window, but Pritchard to me, I think he could, could improve. I think this is his last season to do it. But... He does seem like, I do think he's one of them that could could turn and we could maybe see the qualities. Um, and again, it's talking about the win and you can, I mean, I was laughing at how much Cosy was smiling earlier, but uh, like it, it does make you feel a lot better. And I, I think it's the same for the players. Like if, you know, if we get some consistency and they they buy into it because we, we get results, I think you will see players perform better. And, you know, Pritchard could be one of them. I think, I think Amenza played great as well. And I, to be honest, I don't think he's played that bad since the start of the season. Again, low bar, but there's um, I think there's more to come for him. And, you know, by the looks of it, we're going to play him. So, um, you know, you just hope they do well. Um, but yeah, I, I was impressed with him, Benza, definitely. I think um, I think he could, have again, have a good run in the team, but we'll see. Neil, Chris, head-to-head, -head, Pritchard and Benza, decent game or not? 
Um, if if, um, if Starbuck thinks that Prince Harmonic match has clearly been at the old communion wine a bit heavy, aren't they? Let's be honest. Um, man at match, far from it. He's, um, he, he infuriates me, I'll be honest. I just, he's just got, we've seen, I know we've said it a million times before, but we've seen the ability that he's had before he came to us and we've, we've yet to see it. Is it an improved performance on Friday? Probably, yeah. Um, but it's not before time, is it? And it, it needs to show a lot more than an OK performance against an average Forest side for me. There's a, he's got to show a lot more to to give us some value. I, I still think there's better players that we can use there. Um, and Benza, I, I've already mentioned earlier on about his his pass for Toffolo and the build up to the goal were cracking. Chris alluded to the fact that um, obviously we're defending back very very deep that we wouldn't have seen on a normal screen. You know, I think I said before the start of the season that with Corberan, with all these players that have sort of been sidelined previously and rightly so because they've been absolutely awful um, and not good around the club, I said at the start of the season that one of those will be transformed under Corberan. There's always one. I mentioned it a million times, but click at Leeds. Leeds fans hated him. There were no way for him at club and he's now arguably their most key player. Um, So, for me... A lot more to do from them both. If there's going to be something from either of them, toss a coin, anybody's guess. Um, if we're relying on these lads for a full season, we'll see, won't we? I, I, hope, I'm, I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I definitely agree. That's one, going to be one of my main points around people will be transformed. There's always, you know, someone who comes particularly isn't wanted in a, or doesn't fit in a thought, tactical style of a previous manager or whatever. Um, I think probably Pritchard, I don't think he was man of the match, but um, yeah, I think he was definitely brighter. I think the thing with him will be, I'm not sure that um, playing as a 10, I don't think that's exactly how Corbran wants to play. Uh, I do think he prefers the 4-3-3 with two eights, and obviously he's not really an eight. Uh, so I don't think they'll try and fit him in there. I think when O'Brien comes back, it could be him who, who might be the casualty. Um, I think... Um, I think and Benza potentially, like you say, could be that one that, that maybe takes on to that next level, you know, and it's going to be someone, you know, you, you look at Leeds as wingers um, with Helder Costa and that sort of style of player that they do like that quick winger, a bit erratic, but has, has got the athleticism to get up and down. So, um, yeah, I think, look, there's, there needs to be a lot more, like, like you said, you'd want more, but I think if you were, if you were looking at it, if I had to put my money on one of them that was going to, maybe fit into this style better, uh, I would say maybe in Benza at this point. Um, but And maybe you do not have certainly seen, we've seen things around, maybe Pritchard has a better market as well uh, for you know, a couple of his former teams, actually, who must quite like him. So, I don't know. I think if I, was, if I had to put my money, if it was a head-to-head between the two, I'd say probably in Benza uh, has probably just about gone. Uh, fits, fits this style more, that's how I'll say it in a, in a constructive way. Good stuff. So, let's go to your comments. So, um... Daz H says, and Benza didn't get the credit he deserves for his pass to Toffolo for the goal. Was a lovely piece of play. I think he posted that before we uh, we spoke uh, about that in glowing terms. Lovely piece of backspin on that. Very really nicely weighted pass. I think which is uh, the the bit I I particularly liked. Uh, Paul Gibson says Pritchard and Benza playing themselves into form. Both need a run of games and for the manager to trust them, especially in Benza. Uh, Peter Swallow says O'Brien back in the team will feel like a new signing. Uh, Phil Marston says, can I make a shout out for Ben Hamer? That is the best game he has played for town by a country mile. I think we'll all echo that. Uh, Oliver Barnes goes on about Mbenza's pass. Uh, Terry is seven and two says Critchlow looks so good. Uh, town slack, uh, O'Brien and Iting in midfield would be great. Iting had shades of Moy for me. So, com- so comfortable on the ball that reverse pass he did, I thought had shades of Moy and, uh, David Hattrick poured scorn, uh, on the, uh, the chicken pod, uh, of, with, with, with the uh, uh, comparisons to Moy, which uh, I, I don't know. I thought that reverse pass, it's very early to sort of make that comparison, but that, that pass in particular was, uh, was very much down that street. And, uh, but what does David know? Cause I, I tell him that Aaron Moy is blatantly the best midfielder Brighton I've ever had, but he disagrees anyway. Uh, so moving on into others, Tom Bradshaw says credit to Steeman who worked really well with Critchlow as well. I think Richard Steeman doesn't quite get the credit. He probably deserves from that performance at the weekend as well. I thought he was really good. The only problem yeah, with Richard's, really 
The only problem with him is when he gets dragged into that wide area. We saw him get nutmegged against Brentford, and again, he probably should have been sent off for uh, the foul in, in around about 76, 77 minutes as well. Um, right, so thanks for that. Um, and Shackle says, is Cosy fallen asleep? But I think Cosy's probably watching La Liga highlights. I can see the reflection. <laughs> I am glasses. actually watching the <laughs> There we go. Today, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> live midweek programme, mate. Exactly <laughs> one, real bet is still if anyone cares. Uh, yeah, so they're not, to- not, not the top. Enough. 20 yeah. minutes gone, mate. I'll keep you posted. Have a look for some strikers for us, Cosy. But not the top 20 podcast did a little bit on us, and they said um, Benz and Pritchard were quite quite decent as well, which uh, which was good to know that they're, they're catching eyes anyway and the, there's hopefully some improvement. But I think, Neil, you're very right in saying that, you know, and, and it does it does get mentioned in the comments. One swallow doesn't make a summer. We need to see far more consistency. I think that's a very fair uh, summary. So, right, on this podcast, I think, it's, uh, I think you've got to be balanced. Uh, I think we are balanced. You've got to praise when necessary, ask questions, uh, and also be critical when needed, in my opinion. That's uh, one of the foundations of what I thought when we set this up. Um, so let's talk about our numbers. Nope, not the coronavirus, but recruitment. So it always comes up every week. Uh, we've criticized the we recruitment. <laughs> well, I want to make a point, actually, because we, we've criticized the recruitment team a lot in the past, rightly, in my opinion. Um, I did the other week on the second tier podcast and they took a snippet of that in isolation and it made it seem a bit worse than what it probably was. Um, But yeah, thanks for that. Uh, So for historical recruitment, that was my point. But uh, we've also praised them in terms where it's needed, you know, in terms of Carl and Grant as well. I thought that was an excellent uh, piece of work, especially for getting him at the price that we did as well. Um, But I want to praise them again, this recruitment team, uh, for the reason that on our season preview, one of the questions I asked was, uh, for a breakout star from everybody. And I said Romani Edmonds, Green or Ryan Schofield, thinking they'll probably settle in the team at one point. But I think we're now seeing a breakout star happen very early uh, and it's happening in front of us in the first three or four games. Uh, it's probably not not blatantly obvious to everyone, but I've seen a huge improvement in one player in particular uh, on Friday night. And it's like Oscars, this, isn't it? Yeah, Come on, it's, name it's, him. Who is it? So Open your envelope, Matt. It's Ben Hamer. No, it's not. <laughs> it's uh, So uh, following up good games against Man United and Norwich, um, I think that we are now seeing a breakout, and I'm going to change my Edmunds Green prediction to Josh Carroll. Get the name out. I've hey, just said it, on, man. man. <laughs> just said it. You're as behind as I follow. Right, so, um, yeah, so... <laughs> Karoma got um, he got in the Infogol team of the week man of the match on whoscored.com he was probably my man of the match in hindsight four key passes he created more than anybody else on the pitch six shots drew two fouls created the opening whereby we should have scored and he should have scored himself Matt but what we're doing is there cut he let himself down just because you were on I think Sky Baku- Josh I think Bakun has taken him to uh, to that barber that he goes to but he just he couldn't afford the colour maybe but I, I honestly on a serious note I think Josh Karoma's now physically he's improved already and we're now seeing a player who's lifting his head he's picking passes he's picking shots okay not everything's coming off but i can see a real player developing here i'm going to come to you uh chris first because i can see somebody here who could develop into a decent number nine you know he's playing wide left or wide right at the minute but i can just see attributes of him how he brings others in really nicely and uh he's good on the turn you know he's, he's becoming strong he's got a little bit of pace and to me he looks like he's developing into that uh, typical number nine who can press from the front. He can bring others in and, and maybe score goals as well. And I think we're starting to see some good development coming here. And in credit to the recruitment team, they did say in 12 months, he, uh, Josh Carone was assigning for 12 months time. And that looks to be coming true to me. Yeah, I think I'd agree. Um, obviously, we didn't see much of him last year. I think physically, like you said, he's he, he, he has... He looks like he's a stocky lad now. He looks like he's got that build to be able to compete at the championship level, like you say, in any position across the front three, um, which is obviously good for, for for the fluidity, as I keep mentioning. And I've stopped mentioning that word. Um, but, you know, I think, like you say, is that, that ability to sort of be able to hold off players really makes a difference in the championship. It's such a, a league where you're under a lot of direct pressure all the time. You know, it's combative if you can you know, be able to ride those challenges, um, not just the hoggy type challenges, you know, those those physical duels. And obviously you're going to be able to, particularly at the high end of the pitch, it's going to help. So, yeah, I think I must admit, I, I, he's probably the player that stands out to me as well so far as most improved. <laughs> it's obviously the, uh, is, is one of the ways to call it. But yeah, I think um, I, I think he's good. about a, As a nine, I'm not sure, maybe in this system, um, but potentially. Um, but I think... Certainly, he's, he's, he's establishing himself in one of those wide areas, and I would I would agree he was he was arguably probably the best player on uh, on 
Friday and, you know, is, is positive. Um, hopefully, you know, he, he can continue it and, 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 and give when some of the other lads do come back, um, give a bit of a selection headache. I think his energy is, I've really loved his energy this season. He keeps running and running and running and he didn't have much holding in them the games against Norwich and, and Brentford, but his attitude seems to be spot on as well. I like he's got something to prove, isn't it? Like having yeah. come back and, you know, particularly that out of position that I keep talking about and, you know, having worked, you know, with the manager valued out of possession quite a lot, you know, that's that gets you in the team. <laughs> Believe it or not, you know, that out of possession work and he's, you know, he, there were a couple of times where he's tracking back you know, he knows that Toffolo's gone past him and in previous years, previous wingers, sometimes you look and think he don't fancy getting back there. Whereas, you know, I think, yeah, he might have something to prove as well, which is obviously always, you know, I think people people always tend to fare better when you feel they've got something to prove. Brady? Yeah, no. Um, uh, Karama, sorry, I had a complete blank then. I, I've been really impressed with him. Um, I think we saw some flashes of him in pre-season, obviously, You've talked about him that with the um, under twenty threes against Man U. That goal he scored was great. I think you know we, we've talked about it how Brentford and Norwich were um, were good teams, but you know I, I think you kind of saw even though he didn't get much um, with Karoma, you did kind of see the change. But I think the issue was again as we've talked about a million times, it's it's chances. You know he he had a speculative effort. I think it was against Norwich, but again. You know, in this game, in the Forest game, we had more shots on target. You know, he was involved in a lot of it. I mean, like you said, he, he should have scored, but it was a good save, to be fair. Probably should have, still should have scored. But, yeah, I think he's been he's been really impressive. I think um, he, he kind of reminds me, not in terms of prolificness, but he reminds me a bit of Grant, how he cuts inside and has a shot. And I think, um, you know, again, uh, I think he's going to be a really useful squad member. I think it'd be interesting to see when, when the kind of the transfer window is settled, if we get anybody new in and injuries come back, where he'll play. But um, yeah, I think he's he looks like he's going to make an impact this season. And um, yeah, you, you got to hold your hands up and play praise the recruitment team. You know, we've um, us pretty much a lot of town. <laughs> every town fan has criticised them, but if this was a sign in for now, um, yeah, we're seeing we're seeing the rewards of it. So yeah, hats off. You heard that hats off for recruitment team. Neil, without me getting too carried away, because I can see you saying, okay, calm your jets. Um, we t- <laughs> I can see it already, but it, it does. It, do you agree that he looks like he's starting to develop, shall we say, and that maybe patience will be required at times? You've got to have a lot of patience. He's still a young kid. Yep. You know, it's, it's, it's one hell of a step up from where he's been. Um, give, give him time. Is, is, it a good, is it a good start? It's, it's a decent start. I won't, go, I won't go as far as good yet. It's a decent start. Um, I think as we go along, we get better players around him. I think that'll help him as well, and I think that'll happen. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, I, I agree with Chris. I don't really see him as a as a straightforward number nine. I'd see him more as a as a wide player on yeah, on either future, side. To be future, fair. Future. Yeah, but on on either side, um, one of those that yeah, you give him give him credit. They brought him in. Is is it for now rather than last year? I don't think I don't think he were ever brought in for last year, to be honest. Um, but I think I like the fact that well, at the end of the day, let's let's be honest. This is why Corbyn's here. Corbyn's here, so we are so we will see players like Ikarovas and Ikrichlos, and hopefully not before too long. Your, your Matty Dailies, etc. This is why you know we're, we're paying him to do his stuff. So long way to go. I, I, I'm just. I'm really loath to get too carried away about the younger players because I think we've got there's a fine line between building them up and and building up to somewhere where we can knock them down easy, you know, try and try and sort of alleviate a bit of that pressure from them. I think he might be another one who will sort of six seven games pull him out for a couple of weeks and then pop him back in again, you know, maybe a couple of games off at the bench. I just I, I want I want to see all these young players. I'd much rather see these young players than the they all been there, tried it, tested, not done it. Um, but you know, there's a, there's a long way to go this way. That's fair enough. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, I asked um, our YouTube audience, uh, sixty eight watching at the minute. So thanks for you, for you guys for doing that. Uh, if you Gibson... scored, I'd have been raving though. Should have scored. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> uh, Paul Gibson says, "Good wide player right now, but can see him being a great number nine in a couple of seasons." So Paul's my best mate now. 
Uh, Chris Green says, Karoma just needs the first league goal for us. Confidence would grow. I agree with that, Chris. Uh, Phil Marston says, Karoma did really well. Potentially, there are a few, such as Critchlow, Edmonds Green. There's not even taken into account Daly or Osterfield. We've got a big Matty Daly fan in uh, Mr. Wayne in the top corner there. Uh, Tom Slack says, 2020, the year of Corona and Karoma. Uh, Terrier 7N2 says, Laura of Averages uh, recruitment by 10 players. At least one will turn out to be good. Mike, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andrew Washington, uh, for Corona to still develop and improve with everything going on behind the scenes over the last 12 months is a massive, massive credit to the lad. And I think that's a, a decent comment as well from, from Andrew. Right, so it's at this point where I think the, the last waffle I did to build up Karoma was, was so excessive that I should shut up now and uh, turn over to uh, Mr. Frost, uh, who asked a question on Twitter. But in particular, uh, we'll, we'll discuss recruitment as well, uh, Brady, and you can lead that for us right now. So over to you, sir. Yes, thanks, Matt, uh, being your uh, you know, sidekick. Itch. for an, Yep. <laughs> How rude. We're live. <laughs> Apologise. Like yeah, the Sky Sports Pundits we're doing every time. Uh, yeah, so I've got two questions for you guys again. Uh, one, from, one from in general. First one, I think this is an interesting one. Uh, and I'm going to do a mat here and give my opinion after I've made the uh, ask the question. Um, so this is from Joe Scott. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about how we need a striker. So, guys, which striker do you think Town should get and could realis- uh, should get and could realistically get? Uh, if you can't name someone, then what's the type of striker you want? Uh, I was having to think about this, and I think one that gets dependent. goals. In the end. I knew you were going to say that. I was. Well- <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Oh yeah, who wouldn't? Um, I was having to think about this. Depends if Grant goes through. Uh, depends how much they want, but. I think Corley Woodrow from Barnsley would be a good shout for this system because he's a big lad, but he can also, similar to Bamford, I think he can, uh, he's quite good with his feet and I think he'd work hard. Um, but yeah, so question again, what striker do you think Town should get and we could realistically get? If not, what striker do you want? Take it away. Anyone? I want Callan Grant to stay. I think he might, you know. I think he might. And if he goes... I'm wanting someone back who we used to love, man. Danny Ward. Take me on oh. Jordan Rhodes, who's not doing a lot of Sheffield Wednesday, but no, I'd, I've always kind of been someone who's like athletic striker. You know, God, last week I was crying Stephen Fletcher, wasn't I? But when we were saying someone to come, but I don't know, just kind of assessing it a little bit now. It's, is, that the, is he really going to be Coburn's kind of style of striker and, and that as well? I, I'm not so sure. I think we'll keep all the grant, you know. I don't think West Brom seem to have this money. I mean, that would seem to be a load of toss. Just with a journalist, Neil, I think you'd kind of echoed him in a tweet. Why would we want a loan? Honestly. I mean, on, Phil Hodgkinson's had some stick, but yeah, just loan a striker. Stay up, you can buy him. Sure, you dickhead, man. That ain't going to happen, is it? No, is that'd it? be ridiculous, but wouldn't it? It would be no, unbelievable. No, I mean... Incredible. I think Grant will stay. You know, I do. I just got a gut feel. But if we'd lose him, get Rhodes back because he's just, we'd have won two or three with Rhodes in on Friday. 100%, man. Go on, Brady. Uh, well, no, I, I say Coley, Coley Woodrow. I, I just, <laughs> it's funny when people talk about strikers because he's saying Rhodes. I think you were saying Necky Wells, someone like him. Someone said that in the comments. Um, yeah. I, I, Andy Boob hasn't think... been mentioned. Uh, it's, it's difficult <laughs> it's difficult to know because of everything that's going on it's just difficult to know who and what's attainable and obviously we've got a new style and it's still we're still really seeing what type of striker fits that front line really well and and to be honest i really like what i saw fraser campbell on friday i think danny ward used to uh, danny cowley sorry flogged him a bit as that uh, pressing forward who used to go in and batter into people and, and turned him into a a pro- it's past 9pm watershed, but he's turned him into a proper shithouse at Alan Lee Tribute Act, um, which I thought was um, needed. But we need thought, a striker. Let's yeah. be honest, we need a striker. But I but, thought Campbell did that, but he's he's mould, but someone younger who can be a bit more dynamic and score goals in that in that mould. And it's very difficult to see who's out there at the minute. I think Carly Woodrow is a decent call, but a lot of the players scoring goals in, in the lower leagues are older, you know, end, you know, 28, 29. Yeah, and so Fair. it's difficult to see where it's come from. So I would imagine that if Grant did go, and, and plenty of tears in the Cosmala La Liga house there, if Carl and Grant did go, then I would suggest maybe a young loan would come in 
Um, who that loan might be is difficult, but a, a very Rian Brewster style striker in that mould would be uh, would be what I would prefer. But I'll probably need a bit more time to think about that. Well, but, we definitely need a striker, but for me, you can look at it a different way as well. We need to start spreading goals around a little bit more and not having the onus on one one guy. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at it, if Grant does go, I mean, we've spoke about this before, but if Grant goes, Milner is already gone. That's most of your goals gone. Yeah. So we need to start, and I think this style will bring around goals from different players. But will it bring enough? That, that that's can... the problem. But we they certainly need spreading around a lot more because we have been well devoid of any kind of input from anywhere else. Well, we so, we've seen the in. stats, haven't we? Sixty three percent direct yeah. indirect. So that worry the other Neil that you know, yeah, get a, a Collie Woodrow in or a Brewster, etc. And yeah, they could come off. But... Brewster's not coming out. That was just a, a, no. t- a model, yeah. But I mean, I'm not, I know there's no tried and trust, but you know what you're going to get with Rhodes. I, I'd want to push the bar and try and get him back. See, Rhodes you? doesn't fit for me. I don't think he, I think he's, think? no, it doesn't fit the stat. I think he's one that you could bring off the bench for, like Norwich did last, like when they got promoted, you can bring him off for 20, 25 minutes when you need something. But I don't think Rhodes can press from the front. I think that's the main main problem with Jordan and it has been throughout his career in that he can't really lead the line like a modern striker and he needs a partner. And I don't think, I think he's good. I think it's a good shout for certain types of scenarios, but I don't think I would lead the line with, with Jordan Rhodes and expect him to be able to put the back line under pressure and, and, and press like we probably need to do. But, but let's hope the recruitment team that you've been bullying up tonight have got us one lined up. Yeah, exactly. And Thanks, obviously Danny I've offered Ward, no yeah. names. So, uh, Danny Ward, any nearer? A week ago, a week or two, is it? Chris, um, Chris, what do you think? Sorry to take you. Yeah, no, I think I I was just about to before, before Neil got in there. Um, I think with this system and the fit, I don't think goals is, you know, like one that scores goals, a Jordan Rose type. If you look at this system and like um, we've just mentioned there, Matt's just mentioned, um, the goals do need to come around from other teams. I'm looking at a team, and I know, again, we're talking about the 4-2-3-1, but this manager wants to play 4-3-3, and it's going to be fluid. I think that striker needs to be mobile, needs to be able to work hard, needs to be able to do that. And I think that is what they'll go for, probably, first of all. It's not exciting that it's going to be a 20-goal a season, man. But you look at um, a team in which, you know, the, the, the 4-3-3 with that nine type of player who's able to drop deep and who's going to work really hard and almost sort of been able the team spread the goals. When you look at Liverpool at the minute, Firmino's not a 20-goal a season, man, as daft as it sounds. Last season, he was very much functional in able to enabling the whole of the team to operate really, really well. Um, so I can see, you know, if we can get, um, you know, the, 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 the two central midfielders, the three central midfielders forward, they're going to get in the box more. We've already said they'll score, hopefully. We can't be much worse at set pieces than we've been. You get a few goals there. Your wingers will, 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 uh, are going to need to step up. You know, you need a couple of 10 goal wingers. I don't actually think that the main criteria, as daft as it sounds, obviously you'd love to have, um, we'd all love to have strikers who score 25 goals. They won't turn one down if it fits. But I think the main the main um, sort of priority, in my opinion, will be that fit tactically and fl- the, the fluidity. I think what they'll do, and I, I'm looking at the Pippa type signing, it wouldn't surprise me if we had a, uh, Someone from from Spain lined up the the Segunda. I remember when I was here before, when we were looking at uh, I can't remember was it before, as we brought Naki in, uh, we were looking at a, a, a striker from Segunda, and it was someone who you think well, he's not going to score twenty goals, but do you know what it could really be, um, you know, it could really suit the team. So I actually think it what you know it doesn't have to be someone with this proven goals record that we're all after, um, who's young because. Quite frankly, they cost a fortune. I think Carly Woodrow is a great shout, but it's, I think it's rich. I don't think we'll be able to afford anywhere near it. You know, champion yeah, yeah. proven now championship pedigree from Fulham. I think you're talking probably not far off what we'd sell Grant for. It's just not going to happen. So I think it'll be. I think it, it might be someone foreign. And look, Fraser Campbell and Wardy. I mean, they probably fit that mold I've just been talking about. Maybe not the most selfish 25 goal season strikers. They work hard. They'll fit the that the, the they can definitely bring others into play, and and they'll fit that hard working, athletic, mobile, um, can fill in, in in other areas. They've both played wide. If that if that system takes them there, so I, I'm probably a little bit different in terms of just we need a goal scorer and let's the number nine score the goals. I I think it's got to be a bit. I don't think it'll be like that. I'd like to throw a point in as well, Brady, on that. I, in- I agree with that. Sorry. 
So it's all so right. Alex, Alex has gone off and everything at the minute. I don't know what's going on over here. Uh, but yeah, the, the B team's going to be interested for me this year because I really want to see how Kieran Phillips and um, Kian Harrett develop in Harrett. that B team. And uh, it's also, it'll be also interesting to keep an eye on Kit Elliott as well over at Cork. He's just gone back to Cork. So I think those three players will be interesting because we've got two experienced players in Danny Ward and Campbell. And I think um, Chris is right in that they... Because uh, when you look at the way that... Um, him down the M621 or him around the corner from me and you, Brady, uh, operates. He, he operates with um, pivots in particular and, and his striking, his striker is a, is a pivot, you know, that people play around uh, as is, you know, the defensive midfielder. And I think he's he will look for, uh, like I say, I think Chris is right. And it won't be a goal scorer. It'll be a pivot player like Campbell Ward, etc. And it'll just be interesting to see how those three develop while we've got two experienced players in the first team. Yeah, no, I think um, I think it's a good point. I, I do agree with Chris about sharing the goals. And to be honest, we, we said this before the Forest game. Um, I think chance creations are our biggest problem. You need someone who uh, who can uh, create the chances. Um, but yeah, uh, second question, uh, final one. Uh, this is from uh, Arthur uh, Difford on Twitter. Um, everyone's if everyone's fit, what do you think is the most uh, effective midfield three for us? Um, again, I'd probably think I'd probably put Iting, O'Brien, and Bakuna. But again, up to you guys. What do you think? It's complete guesswork in it because we haven't seen them. There's no way you can possibly judge in this formation who is going to be the most effective three together. And there might be one expected random one through. There might be a Matty Daly who comes in and does well. I think this this formation will be all about getting five or six of them to play there consistently well rather than a three exclusively. My number, There's one for me who is like, I think he's unbelievable, is the one play, person that I'd have in when he's fit is O'Brien. I think he's the one that particularly in the 4-3-3 playing as the left eight, that left-footedness, along with Toffolo, hopefully along with the, um, uh, the centre-back um, being left-footed as well, gives you that... So, yeah. Yeah, gives you that uh, balance. I think he's one that would definitely be. I think they'll look at him and think he suits this team formation style to the absolute maximum. And then it'd be interesting. I know with with Hoggy and uh, and with Iting, they're two very obviously opposite types. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see. You know, there'll be certain games that suit Hoggy more. There might be certain games that suit Iting more. Particularly, that might dominate the ball a bit more. And I think you you, you know you, you do see since since since. Um, since Aaron Moy left, feeding those front players is going to be really important. Um, getting the ball to them in decent areas with in decent opportunities is, is is going to be important. So I think whichever one manipulates the ball best and can break lines and pass forward into the wingers and into the forward is going to going to give themselves a good chance. So yeah, I think uh, my own. I've got one answer there. It's so O'Brien. Ah. I think you can't neglect the physical side. Uh, so Chris has summed everything up perfectly for me there, but I think the only thing I can really add to that is off of the ball, you can't really neglect the work that Jonathan Hogg puts in. Um, I think if you put O'Brien Pritchard and um, Iting in there, all of a sudden the central midfield looks very light. So that's where people like Hogg become incredibly important to uh, to balance that up. And uh, it, it depends if you're playing three central or a number 10. Um, but I, I'd probably start O'Brien because Corbran, listening to Corbran, he said he likes a left footer on the left in the centre and a right footer on the right in the centre. So O'Brien, Bakuna, Hogg, and then the rest have to work their way in, I think. No, well, ch- cheers, guys. Uh, and thanks to everyone who in the questions. Fantastic. Right, I turn this over now to Mr. Kosmala because you want to talk about fans in the ground and your experience at FC United. Yeah, I went to my first game since March the 7th. I can't remember what happened March the 7th. All town fans have quickly erased that out of the memory. But yeah, I went to Broaders Park to watch FC Man United versus Scarborough. And uh, it was, uh, the game was a shocker. But it didn't really matter was that. It was 600 people in the stadium chanting, distanced. It just felt good, man. It just felt like this is, this is doable. And appreciate small numbers and things, but everyone was sensible. There were a lot of space. I think it holds 4,700. Uh, and 
to cut a long story short, Phil Hoskins obviously gone on TalkSport today and uh, kind of been frustrated with the government's approach. And I have to say I'm totally in agreement with him. I, I'm really frustrated at the moment with kind of the breakdown, it seems to me, of getting people back in stadiums. It seems to be all going the other way. You're hearing stuff that way tonight. The pubs in the North East, you can't even meet anyone now, anyone else outside your bubble and stuff. So, but there's no reason in my opinion, obviously, Dick, what is it? What's that, Chief? It's like witty or whatever. I feel like one of them Downing Street, but surely you can get 5,000, 2,000, 1,000, 3,000 in seats. You can do it right. You can do it distance. I can't believe it. And the longer it goes on, obviously, the clubs are just going to kind of rot. And it was such a great experience going. And it does seem bizarre that, like, seventh tier football, it's almost like a bit of a loophole, really, because I don't think it's classed as kind of professional sport is it it's in the same way it's like local cricket but obviously I think Osset uh, Osset United I think they had 450 uh, kind of fans on Saturday but there's no reason in my opinion why we can't get it going and October was billed as the start of this getting back in the grounds it seems to be a long way off now and it's not just football it's other sports and that as well it's just so frustrating having seen it first standing in the kind of a terrace there was a little bit of seating but it was almost terrace there's no reason why it can't happen and I just worry that, you know, more clubs are kind of going to go to the wall. It does, it does seem to be one miles away more than ever, but you're not telling me in that John Smith Stadium we couldn't even open two stands or something like that as well. I know when I put it on Twitter today, there's some fair points back saying, yeah, why well, would they get in? Would it be crowded, etc.? But I think if you just had a bit of common sense and and what have you, I don't, I don't see any reason. I just think if football fans were told that we want to be back in, they'd love to be back in, but any, you know... We've seen the chaotic scenes of people coming out of pubs at, was it, 10 o'clock now and stuff like that as well. I think football stadium is probably going to be one of the most safest things to be in at the moment. And for it not to even be getting off the line is is pathetic. And I'm afraid there's going to be some more Macclesfields coming up and, and berries unless stuff starts rolling soon. But the government just seems to have gone so quiet on it. And it's just so frustrating. Ridiculous when on Saturday we can go to, you know, I don't know, go in another stadium and 600 people. I, I love what I've had on Saturday, but I think it's probably going to go the other way, really, more than, you know, kind of getting back in. They're going to kind of shut down some of these non-league stuff, but I don't know what you guys think. But, yeah, the virus is coming back a little, you know, a bit and stuff, but it just seems to me with nowhere near getting back, and we should. They can they can easily do it distance, surely, can't they? You know my thoughts on it. We've done it a million times. I don't think we'll see a live game this season. The end. But we should be able to make some efforts to get it going, Neil. There's, there's nothing. I, I, I'm not, I'm not disputing that. I just don't, I just don't think we will. And you know, it's, it's just one of them, isn't it? I think we just have to face up to it, make most of it while you can get in on league grounds because that might be the next thing that goes. Mate, the clubs are going to go, man. Mm. We know. That's the but... worry. That's that's the worry. You need the top of the pyramid now to be able to. Um, support those those below otherwise there's going to be more Macclesfields and Berries and that's that's the biggest tragedy so we want to go and see a game it's part of our lives but it, you know to see centres of communities and clubs go would be the would be an absolute obviously it would be it would be just terribly sad Chris you could get 2,000 in the ground 3,000 I mean you look at in our stadium it'd be nothing we're used to the kind of decent crowds but for some of these further down 2,000 could be different between living and dying man and yeah. there's been no efforts made at all this so the kind of the communication's gone. It's like Boris, right? We're abandoning it October first. What's happening? Any communication? Any plans behind the scenes? Hoping that you, you're hoping that the, the clubs are getting some sort of communication that they're going to have some help. You know, I, um, looking at Nigel Clibbins, obviously at Carlisle, and they did some really good work from following him on Twitter. Looking at getting fans back in and being really transparent, and then all of a sudden this happened. It changed it all and. You know, it must be really disheartening, but I'm I'm hoping that those that that's my main thing. Well, I'd love to go to games as we all would, but you just hope the clubs are still there to go back to to go, get back to games when this does pass over because it will. Moving on, a bit of sad news broke Sunday morning. No surprise really, but David Wagner leaving Schalke. Uh, bloody hell! When I were there in like November last year, they were third. The place was bouncing, and the only thing that you'd say, I mean, the the record obviously with the results has been shocking, but. There's a bit of a backstory, really, to it. The club seems to be in a total disarray. Kind of wages not being paid on time. They've lost all the best players and stuff. I was surprised that he stayed over the summer. I mean, fantastic first game, Bayern Munich away. 
you know, probably the best team in the world. Obviously, they lost by eight, which didn't help. And I did watch the game on Saturday night, and it, it was really sad, really, to see. And I think what's even more sad to me, I've seen a few comments from town fans seem to be kind of happy that that is he's failed. And I, I just can't believe it, me. And a guy like that, he should have a statue next to Adam Wilson outside that train station. And yet, there's some people that are kind of chuffed that he's failed. I think I'd be, you should be ashamed of yourselves, man. The guy brought us the times of our lives. And I just no, I, like wallow in, in like the misery of, of a, a guy who should be up there. It's disgusting. <laughs> oh, no, I'll, I'll jump in. Everyone's gone quiet. It's like we had oh, a bit really of a moment really for him, good. didn't we? Yeah. Um, yeah, look, I, you know where I live. I live in Leeds and I take Charlie to Diddy Kicks on a Saturday morning and you come back and you, you go past, there's a huge mural of Bielsa on the wall in um, Wortley area, Wortley, wherever it is. And um, they, they have him on a wall in the centre somewhere near Hyde Park. There's streets named after players, etc. cetera. Uh, t- you know, over here, they've taken great pride in, in what he's achieved. And I find it incredibly sad when people try and disparage the incredible work that David Wagner did. Those two seasons are some of the most incredible uh, feats of football management um, that I think we've seen in, in, in our, in, well, in a hundred years at Huddersfield town, you know, you can throw in Ian Greaves, but you know, he had, he had some decent England players in the future there, but you know what he did and, and let's not make, let's not mix this up. It's what he did. Not what, you know, there wasn't, you know, millions behind him. We've seen the fourth lowest budget in the league, et cetera, et cetera. And people just who have, um, who try and discredit what he'd done. I just find that incredibly poor taste, to be honest with you, and incredibly sad. And I don't understand why anyone would do that. And for me, you've got to take immense pride in the good times and what people like that have brought to the club. And to disparage it, I just don't understand that mentality. But that's where I'll leave that. No, I agree, Matt. I was really surprised. I mean, when um, when we got the news on Sunday, I was, I was like, oh, it's a bit unfortunate. And Cosy has alluded to Schalke, a, a, a bit of a basket case and had a big transformation over the summer. Um, but yeah, I was really surprised how many fans were like, oh, you know, um, he only had a good season and a half at town or, Bollocks. you know, he was, yeah, he was lucky and um, everyone performed, collect, was lucky and we're at that peak at that time. I, it's just... I don't know. I don't know about you lads. And I know we can be a pessimistic bunch, but like, can't you just, can't you just admit it was a good time and he was a good coach and, you know, it was successful. I don't understand why I have to be here, but Chapman lost the plot and all that. It's (laughs) just like, he was, he was good. You know, it was the right time for town. He was a great coach. We all saw how great he was. We all saw how much it changed. And just because he's done bad at Schalke, doesn't mean he's not a good coach. Like, you know, there's a lot of factors why he did bad at Schalke. There's a lot of factors why it didn't work out well at town, you know, towards the end, as we've well, it's well documented. I think it really annoyed me. You know, I think he's a great coach. We all, I bloody love him, you know, completely transformed this club. And um, yeah, I'm sure he'll, you know, be, I'm really interested to see where he ends up next. I think, Chris, um, do you think he'll come back to England? Do you think there's a chance? I think there's a chance. Um, I was in touch with uh, Christoph over the summer and I know it was a really challenging when I spoke to him there some of the challenges that they had was the basket case that we've already we've already discussed was um it, it was real um and it wouldn't surprise me if they were feeling more relieved um than anything at the minute obviously they wouldn't have wanted it to end like that but I don't think you know, it's not really set up for it's not the shelter that we remember uh with obviously those top players so yeah I think there's a chance he could come back over here I don't know obviously it's early days um so he's it, it, time will tell. Obviously, I, I think he definitely, obviously the the profile of the club he's been at, he he deserves and will will we'll get another chance at a, a good club with hopefully better circumstances than than he had at Schalke. Matt, you got a bit of news on Mr. Devlin and Mr. Hodgkinson. Maybe cut, maybe cross that bridge next week because um, I think. It links nicely into football finance, and I think more will come out over the next few days. But they've both been in the the national news, haven't they? Uh, Radio Four and uh, elsewhere um, in terms of talking football finance, and we've covered that slightly. But we'll maybe do that next week. Um, just bear in mind the uh, that we're probably boring people to death now online. So <laughs> I think uh, we're going to win that- again on Saturday. By the way, I think we'll win again. I uh, will we'll, we'll very briefly make some Rotherham predictions because Cosy, you, you're the uh, prediction master oh, now. Yeah. yeah. After that, so I think we're we're all looking at you, and we're all uh, 
we'll have our betting slips handy as to what you say on this one. I think we'll win one nil again. Sneak it, man. I think Karoma's going to do it. Karoma's going to be your man as well. We've talked him up. He's scoring. Neil? I'll second that. One goal win. Done, Chris. One goal win. Draw. Yeah. One all. Brady? Uh, yeah, I'm. Well, maybe it's the uh, the heady heights of having a having a win on Friday, but I, I think I agree with Cosy. I think we're going to win. I think uh, Paul Warren. We'll look out for Paul Warren. He's an interesting bloke, the uh, rover and boss, and obviously we'll Decent. be doing a, a preview. Um, but yeah, Karama was obviously on loan there last time, and um, yeah, maybe he'll uh, make a difference and get on the score sheet. I um I think there are a number of teams in this league that are set up that can damage us with direct football, and I think Rotherham will be one of them. Uh, Preston, Rotherham, and teams like that could Ma. could cause a bit of an issue for us in terms of set pieces. Fair Obviously, enough. we've seen our record with set pieces. Uh, I'm going to say we're we're going to hit a bump and we're going to lose. <laughs> this is more like the pod we know. I oh, know. It's just I just I just <laughs> see I just see, I just see difficulties. <laughs> I just see difficulties in defending set pieces. Um, if, unless Nabi Sar unless Nabi Sar's in for for someone, then I think we might struggle a little bit on on the direct play. But if we if we get a handle of the direct play, then we've got every chance of uh, coming off with even bigger than one 0 But it's no, just that be easy. There are good, you know, there are you know, there are a lot of good things from people who I know who've been there and are there about the manager and the atmosphere and how tough they are to play against. It won't be easy. I think they've given a big contract, haven't they, Warren? Is it three, four years, I think. Yeah. On his yeah. Job, yeah. Club Remember legend, isn't he? Top, really top man club yeah. legend, yeah. He's a good guy, isn't he? When you hear his interviews, he's proper emotional as well. Eh? Yeah. Bald men managing, I'm all for it, mate. But we'll win on Saturday. Cosy, sing us out. Oh, you always say this, don't you? <laughs> it's, it's my thing, unless Chris wants to uh, take it take it on. <laughs> now look at his face over, he definitely doesn't <laughs> <laughs> right thanks uh, thanks everyone for uh, for listening to this episode we, and here's Mr. Cosmo to mid table <laughs> we're done man <laughs>